If you're in practice and have been in practice as long as I have, odds are excellent that you will have clients that just drive you absolutely crazy. So today we're gonna to talk about what do you do with those clients that drive you absolutely bonkers. And we're gonna talk mainly about firing clients. So today I wanna to touch on a subject that was quite foreign to me when I was first in practice and that was firing clients. And especially, I guess, when I'm building a practice, the whole prospect of actually purposely getting rid of clients is not something that I was looking at doing. So for those of you who looked or listened to my last week's video where I talk about things that people do to lose clients, today we're gonna to talk about actually getting rid of those clients that are undesirable. So today we're gonna to talk about why you wanna fire clients, how to fire those clients, and how to identify who are those clients that you should fire. So starting with the why, why should you fire clients? Well, there's a few things that I think makes your practice healthier, is by firing clients, there's, there's a tremendous advantage such as higher energy because you're not having all your energy sucked at dealing with those difficult and often bad clients. It's really good for office morale, and I'm telling you, there's nothing that brings up the morale of the office than them learning that you've actually gone the step and gotten rid of a client because they know that it impacts your revenues, and especially if they understand that part of the reason you fired the client was for their benefit, to make it better for, for them, a better life for everybody who works for you. And it does really wonderful things for employee morale. And the other thing that it does is it gives them a sense of control because now they understand that if things aren't great due to poor clients treating us badly, that they are a little bit in control, that it's not something that they have to live with that it is possible to get rid of those clients and regain a better sense of control over their work environment. The other thing that getting rid of bad clients is that it may help increase your ability to raise fees. Because one of the things that I recognized when I was first in practice is that one of the reasons you may want to get rid of clients or fire clients is for fee resistance. Because something I discovered over time is that part of the resistance to raising fees wasn't so much clients, but rather me, in my own resistance in my own mind to increase fees. And a lot of that came from the complainers, those clients who were always complaining about what I was charging. And then I realized as I started firing those clients and getting rid of those clients who were extremely sensitive to my fees, I suddenly found myself with almost nobody complaining about my fees. And with that came the confidence to increase my fees because I realized at some point that a lot of the resistance in my own mind to increase fees came from the complainers. And once I got rid of the complainers, the fear disappeared to a large extent. So it will probably help in your ability to actually increase fees. And let's face it, the other huge advantage of firing clients is just making life better. I keep thinking there's not enough money in the world for me to have to deal with crap day in and day out. Being in practice is a grind. It's a hard of work, it's difficult, and it's difficult enough without having to deal with those really stressful people. So why not do a purge of those clients every now and then? So one of the things we do at our firm on a semi-regular basis is do an actual purge where I send an email out to all of my employees and I will ask them, are there people that you want to get rid of, clients that you think should no longer be part of our practice? And then once I get the list back, I will then sort through that, have discussions with my team, and come up with the list of the clients that we actually want to fire. So these purges, you'll find, are really, really healthy for your practice. And I strongly recommend that you start doing that, and the feeling you're gonna get out of it is gonna be unbelievable. So what are the things that we need to do before we start purging and firing clients is to come up with a very clear list of the things 
that you find undesirable. In other words, you gotta find a way to identify those bad clients. So what I did is when I sent the email out to my team, I would usually say, here are the things that I want you to think about when you're making up this list of these clients that you wanna fire and, and identify those areas that make them undesirable. So number one on my list anyways of things that makes a client undesirable is how rude they are. So I have no tolerance whatsoever for a client who will treat me or even more my team members rudely. So I will usually tolerate a certain amount of rudeness towards myself, but I have zero tolerance for anybody being rude to any one of my team members. So that is one thing that I usually have very low tolerance about. People can get frustrated, you can get angry, and that's cool, because that's normal. But that does not give my clients the right to be rude and be uncivilized towards any of us. So being in a bad position does not give you any rights whatsoever to put this on other people around you. So you can vent, you can talk about it, you can put it all on the table, I'm okay with that, but do not start attacking my team or stalking me or my integrity. That is something I will not tolerate. The other thing that I look at is people who do not pay my bill willingly and quickly. So if every time I do service for a client, I need to fight for my fees, then after a while I will usually have a discussion that says, look, this has to end. You either accept what I'm billing you because what I'm billing you is based on what I think is fair for the services that you received. And if you disagree with what I'm charging you for what you're getting, then we need to talk about it so we can come up to an agreement. But given our philosophy here at our firm, where we always discuss fees prior to starting the work, then I would expect that the discussion would happen before we start on the work. And if we need to have a discussion that goes on and on every year about what we're gonna charge, then after a while, I'd rather not deal with you anymore. I'd rather you go elsewhere and take up some other accountant's time in dealing with the fees. Because I think that what we provide as a service and what we charge for such services is fairly invoiced. So if people disagree with what we charge, then at some point in time, it's healthy for both you and the client for them to go elsewhere where there's a better match between what they expect and what they're willing to pay for such services. The other thing that I look at is clients who don't take my advice. And I suppose a lot of people will say, well, what difference does it take if they take your advice? If they pay your bill willingly and quickly and they're not rude, why does it matter? Um, and I guess for me, that is still a reason to fire a client because the reason I get up in the morning is to make a difference in people's lives. So if I'm gonna provide all kinds of advice and my advice is continually being ignored, then it really takes a lot of the fun out of coming to work. After all, we're really coming to work not only for the almighty dollar and, and all of that. Part of what we're wanting to do, and most of you who are in practice, the driving factor that gets you up every morning is the caring for your clients. And if they're never gonna follow your advice, it's extremely disheartening and really does maybe consciously or subconsciously impact your confidence, your energy, and the fun of coming to work. So if it's gonna affect those three things, why not that make that as part of the list of the things you look at to determine whether you're gonna continue servicing a client or not? The other thing I am very have low tolerance for are clients who blame me for everything. They blame me, blame me for paying too much taxes. They blame me for uh, everything that happens bad in their businesses and in their lives. And at some point in time, like really, uh, I'm getting blamed for that. And I still remember several years ago, somebody forgot to buy insurance for their operation. And they were upset with us for not highlighting the fact that they had not bought insurance. And I'm thinking, well, if you're gonna blame me for not buying insurance, where does it stop? Because these are all things that you as a business owner should be always looking for. What are the things I need to have in place for me to have a successful business? Now, I will highlight to you all the things that I see, will bring to your attention, 
but that cannot be blamed for every little thing that goes wrong in your business and every little omission that you may have done. I'm sorry, but there's a line to be drawn as to where I am to blame and not to be blamed. And then believe me, I am open to taking all the blame that I deserve for the things that I really was responsible for. But when those demands or their expectations is unreasonable, you know that those kind of people will be the first one to sue you should anything go wrong. So whenever I see people always extremely quick at blaming me for everything that goes wrong in their lives, all of my spider senses go up and I go, ooh, he's a dangerous client. And I tend to want him out of my office and out of my client list because like I said, it is a higher likelihood that they will sue you if they get anything that goes wrong. On that same note, take a look at the risk to some degree. There are certain clients where they, I find they are just overly zealous with ideas on how to save taxes. Now I'm fairly aggressive and I'm not that fearful in helping clients with fairly aggressive strategy to save taxes. But there are clients who will just push it too far, where they're gonna ask me to do things that I'm just not comfortable with. And I find if they're being too aggressive, that's when I tend to say, okay, enough. Go elsewhere, find someone else who's willing to do those things for you, because I'm not willing to cross that line and my integrity does not allow me to do that, nor does my code of ethics and my moral senses. So all of these things will come into play as to whether I continue servicing a client or not. And again, those are the clients that are higher risk of you getting sued. And trust that little voice inside of you and if you're thinking, ooh, this is the kind of person that I think would not blink an eye at suing me at the first possible opportunity, consider getting rid of those clients because you're gonna sleep a lot better at night and the odds are good that your inner voice is correct. So those people you may want to get off your list. Other things that I look for is clients that are overly demanding. And I'm okay with clients calling me often because that's part of what we do. And if they're okay with me billing them every time they call me, that's okay. But when it becomes uh, a point where it becomes a little bit ridiculous, where they're asking us to do everything for them all the time, you have to draw that line and decide where do you want to draw that line as to what demands are reasonable and how often it is for them to call you or not. And often clients, I will have clients where it's gonna be sporadic, where we're gonna to go to a three, two, three week period where they're gonna call me on a daily basis. And it kind of makes sense because they're going through something, changes in their operation, they're making a big transaction, whatever, and they're gonna call me often. And I'm very cool with that. And so you got to make a line as to what's reasonable and not reasonable. And it's not the number of calls that will dictate as to whether it's a bad client or not. It's not how often they call me, but what are they calling me about? And so those are the kind of things you need to decide as to whether or not it makes part of your definition of a bad client or not. And finally, one of the things that to me is really important is that I feel appreciated. So I tend not to take too kindly for clients who are unappreciative. And that's easy to detect, right? Is when they're always blaming you for everything and they never thank you and all of that and they complain about the bill all the time. Well, I'd say those people tend to be unappreciative. Um, and what they do to you, the fun of coming to work and to your energy level is probably more detrimental than you possibly think. So the next thing I'm gonna talk about is words of caution. So before we go there, I would really appreciate that you subscribe to this video, add comments about firing clients, because this is not something that is common for a lot of people. So I would really like to get your thoughts for those of you who have fired clients and how it felt, how it went, how you've done it. And I'd also like you to add comments below about the uh, experience that you've had in doing that. And if you haven't done it, what's holding you back? And maybe even don't be afraid of asking questions about how you would possibly do it if you find that we're not clear enough. So here's the word of caution. I find that every now and then, everybody seems to fall into one of two pools. I've got these accountants over here and bookkeepers who never fire clients. And then it seems to be like there's a whole bunch of over here who fire clients but are possibly a bit too overzealous. As soon as a client pisses them off, they're gone. And I hear that all the time where 
people will boast about that and they'll say things like, well, at our firm, we are extremely intolerant. Anybody does this, 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 and that, we just fire them. Well, okay. <laughs> but sometimes be careful with that because you may find that that F client can be converted into a A or B client. It's just a matter of making them aware. Let them know that they are a bad client. And I still remember several years ago, and this is where I really clued into this. Several years ago, I had done one of those purges where I had sent emails to all of my employees. I came up with a list of clients that wanted to be fired and I had come up with a list of about 35. The 35 was whittled down to the worst 10 and I had sent letters to all 10. And by the way, we tend to actually send letters. So I know there's a lot of people who will get rid of clients simply by increasing fees and then forcing them out the door. I'm not a fan of that. In my opinion, if you're gonna fire a client, fire the client. It's a hell of a lot more fun and it sends a message to them as to what exactly transpired. And I'd say there's less likelihood of a backlash from firing a client than simply raising fees. Because if you're just raising fees, they're more likely to talk bad about you than if you actually fire them, okay? Because getting fired is not something they'll wanna bring up to everybody around them. Plus, firing a client is far more satisfying than them leaving you because you've increased fees. So now going back to the word of caution, like I said, there are accountants who are extremely intolerant and will just fire clients right away. So going back to that story, we had sent letters to 10 clients and out of the 10 clients, eight of them came in back wondering what had happened and why I was firing them and they wanted to get more explanation. And I was very okay with having that discussion with them. And I said, here are the reasons, like we said in the letter, why we fired you. You're rude to us. And remember that indication you had with this employee? And you always bitch about your bill. You complain about this. And we really laid out all of the reasons why they were getting fired. And what was really interesting is that they all apologized. And they all asked if I would be willing to take them back. Not all of them, but a good many of them. And then I realized, and I, I, and I, and I actually did take them back, and I said, okay, but let's be very clear. Here are the things that I will not tolerate you in the future. And most of those clients became A or B clients. And some of them are still clients yet today, despite the fact this happened many, many, many years ago. So it is possible to convert an F client into an A client, but it's a matter of having a discussion. So one of the things I look at before I just fire a client and saying, what are the odds if I were to have a heart-to-heart -heart discussion with that person that they would change the way they operate, the way they think, and so on? So before you send all these letters out and fire all these clients and say, hey, I did this because you recommended I fire all these clients, think about the alternative, which would be to talk with them, meet with them, and have an eye-to-eye, heart-to-heart discussion. And be sure that when you talk to them, you really talk to them in their eyes and ex explain to them what it is that you want to see changed in their behavior. And you'd be amazed on how many of these F clients can be converted into A clients. And I guess my philosophy around that is we work like dogs and we do so much marketing and all that to get new clients so if you can convert a $3,000 client who's an F that you would usually get rid of and convert them into an A client, holy crap, it's like getting a new client for $3,000 because you didn't lose them as a client after all for not firing them. So take a look at that. And I would suggest that you, before you get on this rampage of, of firing all these clients, take a look as to whether or not you can convert those F into A clients. So I hope you found this video useful. Um, and again, just want to remind you, make the most of every day and work in your practice rather than on your practice. And remember to work on your business rather than in your business and make the most of every day.